Greetings, I am a man, presumably. Have you ever met a rich person? I mean like a really rich person, not some dick wank boomer who became a plumber at 14 and spent all his money on scratch cards and holiday homes in Mallorca for his fat disaster of a wife and their two basic as fuck daughters. I mean like a really rich guy. So rich every time they go to wipe their ass they've made more money just on the interest on the spare change they have rooting around under the sofa. You know the type. Look, I come from a city where there are quite a lot of rich asshole businessmen types rolling around and since I lived quite close to a place where a lot of them had their little prestige offices, I would see them pretty regularly rolling around in their stripy shirts, slapping each other in the back and starting fights at McDonald's. And I started to notice a pattern with these chuckle fucks. I'd said of all the dressing roughly the same, was that they were all buying Porsches. I, I, I know they drove Porsches because they would sit and rev the engine any time they were stopped at a crossing until at least one girl looked at them. I, I mean, I don't know what the girl was thinking at the time. You hear a loud engine rev and look up to see a shiny, expensive convertible and a bald, flabby man staring back at you with a grin that would have me reaching for the pepper spray. But what I began to notice was that these guys were all driving the same car, a Porsche Cayman. Also known as the cheapest Porsche on the market, this is the budget end of the luxury car scene. And to put that in perspective, here is the cheapest Ferrari. Now, the reason for this was easy. You know, the shirts, the fancy gold watches, the big offices in the centre of a historic city, the fancy car. It was all show, all a display. They were in sense peacocking. But not for the benefit of rich clients who wouldn't be impressed with all this bullshit in the slightest. No, it was for the benefit of each other. They couldn't afford to peek off with the big boys, the true rich bitches, hence the cheap Porsche and the stilly name McDonald's, so they enclosed themselves into a tight community of business clowns, each trying to outdo the other with what is essentially wank fashion. These men were the kings of Tribe Little Dick, adorning themselves with the cheapest and tiny dick fashion as they eagerly leapt and bounded towards their inevitable sexual harassment lawsuit, their dicks now so small they were invisible to the naked eye and could only be viewed on a clear day via the Hubble Space Telescope. But as I stood behind one in line one day, waiting for my chicky nuggies, rolling my eyes as he proclaimed loudly about how many shares he had in the company and thus how many of the servers he technically owned, I felt my mind begin to wonder. Are the big boys like this? The real rich people? When you get beyond the tiny dick tribe and into the real numbers of richness, you know, the people that can afford to wipe their ass with a really soft toilet paper, the luxury shit on the top shelf that's always in the purple package. You know, billionaires. I looked into it, and I spent a, a long time looking into the lives of the rich and the fabulous, and, and, and well, it, it, no, it's, it's not much different. I mean, there is a tipping point where simply looking rich and having the prestige token simply wasn't enough. You had to actually be rich, and being rich meant wearing your bank account. Your clothes, your car, your house, what you or it looked like didn't matter. All that mattered was the price tag. And in this community, the bigger it was, the more powerful you became. Moist Critical recently showed a $39 million apartment in New York. The apartment was trending since it was, as he so rightly pointed out, shit. The way it was awful, the decor was tragic, the view non-existent, and the general finish of the apartment was so bland, I honestly thought at first it was just being used for storage. But the agent showing us around was nothing but enthusiastic. Now, I've been to a lot of viewings as a filthy doomer millennial adult, but what we mostly talk about is how much is the rent, are there pets allowed, and is there sufficient closet space for my massive collection of avocados that I spend all the millions I make working minimum wage at Burger King on. This bitch doesn't do any of that. She's enthusiastic, so enthusiastic to tell you what everything is made out of. This is onyx, this is Japanese maple, this is marble, that is marble, everything is marble, I'm made of marble. The floor below the apartment must be nothing but steel girders reinforcing the crap out of this marble infested 500 ton nightmare. But in spite of how tasteless and overpriced this hunk of trash is, it's sold. And someone is currently living in it. Why? Uh, because the price tag is all that matters. Now that person can brag that they own a $39 million apartment in New York. They can brag endlessly about what everything is made out of, and that's all this apartment is. No one's going to be living in it, at least not full time. It's a bragging right, which is why there are so many bars and entertainment lounges. The only people who are going to see the inside of this house are the prostitutes he's going to call at 2am who are going to be so coked out of their brain they probably won't notice the god-awful craftsmanship in the Onyx bar there. I'm also pretty confident Onyx is black. What you have here is white Onyx, also known as the cheaper Onyx. This is the cruel trick that nature plays on the hyper-rich. The smug belief that you are the epicenter of style and sophistication, while being so far beyond it, it's almost parody. 
also known as the Adena Monsoon Syndrome. But these people have lived in a world where they have solved all of their problems by throwing money at stuff, so it's become the grandiose solution to everything. Former supermodel wife sagging slightly? Boom! Plastic surgery. Dumb kids dumb as fuck? Boom! Private tutor. The slow realization that you are not a unique and creative person, that your friends don't laugh at your jokes as hard, that they've all started to move on with their lives, that the, that the phone never rings as much anymore, that the, the waitress has already heard all your jokes you make, so much so that there are entire subreddits dedicated to how annoying it is to hear them over and over from the millions of guys just like you. The parties you go to are now all about networking, and as you get older your boyish good looks are being replaced with grey hair, a flabby body, and a dull, plain, boring clothes. You've finally done the most adult thing you can do, which is learn to get over yourself. You're not some gifted, amazing, out there guy going against the herd that you thought you were when you were 15. You're the you're the same as everybody else, doing the same shit, thinking the same shit, except you are more boring because you won't shut up about it. You've based your entire personality on being someone special. Now that's gone, you have nothing left. Boom, Lamborghini! Now, all well, those are very specific examples, but I think the ultimate example of just how generic and boring the rich are, are super yachts. Super yachts are the ultimate expression of wealth, the final flex. You see these fucking things everywhere, and they all look the fucking same. White, shiny, with a lot of big glowy lights and blacked out windows. They're all so generic that this one with the blue hull is probably the most original mega yacht I've ever seen. Even concept art for future boats honestly looks like someone just dropped a paper mache model on the floor and said, ah, yeah, that'll work. Sometimes you see real concepts for amazing looking ships, and even luxury submarines, floating palaces with gardens, you name it. But they never build those. They just build this. Over and over and over. Like there's some company out there just rubber stamping these shit pylons out. You compare this to the world of canal boats. Canal boats are a thing you really only see in the UK and places like Amsterdam and the Low Countries. Occasionally in places like France. And these things are about 55 foot long and 7 foot wide. A shipping container home has more space than these things and they break down continuously. Like, I'm not kidding. I have one of these things and I can't even begin to tell you how many fucking times it's broken down. How many times I've been up to my ass in engine grease trying to find out which one of the many shit pipes has broken off this time and why literal shit is volcanoing itself out of the toilet and into the cabin. These things were built in the 70s by men to whom ideas like refrigeration and electricity were some new fangled invention they just couldn't quite wrap their heads around. To the super yacht, these are nothing. These are a joke. Laughable. You couldn't be further away from the luxury offered to you by Mega Yacht unless you were on a fucking fishing trawler, and those things at least work. And yet, when you look at canal boats, I dare you to find two that look the same. Each one is different, both interior and exterior, each one a different name, a different colour, all built to reflect the general personality and quirks of the owner. Some even have weird, wacky designs. Now compare that to these things. Now what's that, sir? Oh, a black hole! Oh, sir is adventurous today, isn't he? utter shit. And of course, it's it's doing them no favours, with the only real criteria for winning the Mega Yacht show-off competition is having a bigger boat. So let us now go to the south of France, to a city so nice it's called, uh, well, that. Uh, this is the centre of the French Riviera, one of the most exclusive vacation destinations in the world, a home to so many Mega Yachts the locals refer to it as a plague. This is one of the major epicenters of exclusive parties of billionaires and gold diggers. This is where Happy Meals come with coupons for liposuction. This is where swimsuit models come to breed. So let's imagine this is you. Hang on, let me just, let me just put that on. Okay, so imagine this is you, some gorgeous swimsuit model lounging the beach. Shut up, I look fabulous. Now, let's say you're old for a swimsuit model, maybe, I don't know, 1920. Positively a veteran. Your day is spent lounging on the beach, lounging on the back of some old rich guy's boat, attending parties, private functions, having your photograph taken, etc, etc. Swinning from luxury hotel to exclusive bar all night. You've been here for years. You know everyone. Everyone knows you. You're on the guest list to every club in town. So, of course, by now, you've seen it all. You've seen every make and model of boat. You've seen their insides. You've felt the sheets of every bed. So when two new boys roll into town in their new mega yachts, who is catching your eye? LD Cunt in his $100 million white eagle cruiser, 
or the man who turns up next to him in his one-to-one -one scale replica of the SS Great Eastern. 19,000 tons of iron and steam with a wheel the size of the Chilean economy and a horn louder than a tumbler blogger who's been lightly offended. <coughs> The big black cock of a ship rolls into harbour, and I guarantee no one's looking at Mr. White plastic shit over there. You just got flexed on, and I shall bask in the light glinting off your sad tears as I roll past twirling my moustache. Now let's get back to you, sweet cheeks. You see us flexing over each other, but whose party are you coming to tonight? Yeah, that's what I thought. What I got? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ho 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 I'll get him hot, show him what I got. Can't read boy, can't read boy, no he can't read boy. Ah, oh, her face, she's got me like nobody. Ah, I need me, fucking 